Hello there, everyone, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new episode in TNO, The Last Days of Europe, of course. What you're playing is everyone's favorite city, Guangdong. A very white highlight of Guangdong. This looks unusual. Very weird, but otherworldly sightings. As a newspaper seller by trade, you was no stranger to outlandish claims printed on front covers. Perhaps a strange monster had been sighted, bringing ill omen to some village in the Nanling Mountains, or maybe it would be an alien sighting in the sky above Port Shori. Though Cantonese society is one characterized by sharp divides, Chinese, Zhujian, and Japanese seem united in their thirst for mysterious sightings and hints of something outlandish coming to interrupt the drudgery of their lives for uh, good or ill. Today, however, a new cryptid has emerged, one which had gained enough traction to appear even in the broadsheets. According to eyewitness accounts, a bold reformer had been sighted in the chief executive's office. A man sworn to combating the social injustices of the Three Pearls, and creating a harmonious society for all within his borders. Thousands of grateful Chinese citizens have also been reportedly cited, thankful for the, for the higher standard of living, which they all now got to experience. Already something of a dubious claim, but he could not help himself but scoff uh, when he learned this mysterious creature had already been identified. Apparently, Guangdong's ethereal benefactor was none other than reigning chief executive Matsushita Masaharu. Where do they come up with this stuff? So, honest pay for honest work, which we do want to do, uh, but we have to wait for this one to do the voting, so... As often discussed with Matsushita's inner circles, form is not a necessity in order for an economy and nation to survive as such. We see no reason to instate unnecessary burdens upon the reputation of the council, especially the conservative, ex conservative executives. Instead of unwanted, unneeded workplace reform, we shall simply offer the workers extra beneficial pay if they voluntarily work longer hours. We'll obviously satisfy uh, the executives as well as please the workers, or at least hopefully. So, um, which one is this one? If you wonder about this, please go right ahead. What is change in man but the caprice of time? I believe I did read this one before, so. Cool. Right now, we're going to get a lot more corruption just because we need to... Well, we need to get a lot of seats. Because we have 39 seats, which is not good. And then we do this, which doesn't help us that much. Um, but doing this gives 50% more seats from the Sony Chung Kong, which... You might get two more seats in total. So with a limited labor standards ordinance pass, really get more Chinese government support, Japanese approval, increased admin costs. So, now we're going to lose a seat of ourselves too, so that's going to really suck actually. So we're going to do Fujitsu as well. We're going to increase corruption for now, which is not good, but it is what it is. So we're going to do this one as well. But then, Sony Chung Kong, we're going to wait for that one. We can do Crackdown Underworld Corruption. Ooh, we've got about house, of course, once again, Advancement in Household Electronics Technology. Please go right ahead. Hey, that stain is finally gone. Beautiful. I wouldn't mind doing this one, because we can just go and decrease the corruption anyway, so we might as well. We'll get that one back eventually. So we're not going to vote yet. But what we do, do is train the next generation. Uh, I think I read this one before, but the wave of men in the current police force are... Uh, are the embodiment of the neglectful rule of our predecessors, an adequate disgrace brimming with corruption and decadence, and capable of performing its duty of efficacy. Uh, the next generation of the police shall not go, and shall, will not be condemned to the same state as the previous generation. It must be guaranteed that they are to be competent and skillful, vigorous and productive. The necessary pre pre preparations and arrangements to ensure this are to be laid, various examinations and drills shall be performed on a weekly basis. To harden their spirits, they shall be proponents of a well-oiled machine, a machine that keeps the residents of the state manageable and allows Guangdong to continue flourishing. All very good things. Bribe Ron, let go see. Yeah, you betcha. We do what we must. Keep it manageable. And sure, the next generation. Yeah. It's not bad. And here we go. Very nice. Jung Kong Hitachi. Yeah, I'll only Hitachi as well here, unfortunately. Hey, advancements in power, efficiency, technology. Very nice. Corruption changes by 0.1 every month. That's pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty darn good. Nice. Right now we're now yeah, we're maxed out Sony. Um, if that's the case, we can do this one too. We might as well. And then merciful heart. The existing Japanese elements present an present and residing within our police force is a variable we have to handle with utmost caution. It has been noted that several Japanese personnel in the police force have been engaged in corruption and financial improprieties. Such behavior would be under, under, under no circumstances warrant immediate expulsion, but it is best not to infuriate them in order to maintain a semblance of harmony within the ranks. We show the Japanese officers and their associates a degree of leniency, the extent of which will be decided. So if you're about the uh, 1952, part 2, please go ahead. And dignity is a privilege of the oppressed, not the oppressor. 
Well, the, the one solar activities will be tolerated no more, which is uh, not really great for us, but you know. All right, so where are we at now? 46. We need only four more seats, which is not too bad. Um, if we vote on this, I mean, we already did all these, so I don't think we get any extra votes anywhere, so we really need to wait. Really from the top, work has been tough for Lam Hyo Sun. Um, as it always has been, but the last few weeks have been beyond what he gradually grown accustomed to. Lem oftentimes found himself missing his old colleagues, who then would have been less fortunate during the chief executive's clearing out of the lower ranks. They may not have been scout officers, but they had gained Lem's trust. The precious few outlets he had on the hostile streets were gone, and his life was all the more dangerous for it. Those few had survived the cut, however, and had never been more motivated. Perhaps it was a revived sense of duty, or his own talent example which drove them, more likely, Lem thought. It was a regular pay they now received. Even the strictest requirements could be softened by good income, even man every man has his price, etc. Lamb coaxed his wandering consciousness back to reality as he heard one of his men call out to him from the, around the corner. Ah, Sion came the voice again as the officer came in sight. Reports arrived from the executive. Additional officers are to be dispatched to our squad shortly. Great, we can have all the right tickets, Lamb replied half-jokingly. The quality of the fresh officers was always questionable. The man let out a short laugh and sharply turned his back on the brief exchange before attending to the other duties. Lamb followed suit, knowing he would be needed uh, back on the street soon enough, yet a disquiet lingered in his mind since the force was desperate for any form of relief, but the record of the executive on such matters has always been weak. Officer Lamb feared the worst for him and his colleagues. Those fears soon drifted away on the glowing ember of his freshly lit cigarette. Time would tell, and the tough work would continue. Of all Japanese dominance, he did get 2% more, but increased Kenpachi control by 2.5%. Beginnings of intelligence network, of course. Alongside the myriad of problems present within the police force, the established order has certainly been a protruding one, comparable to a beam of wood that has failed to petrify instead of rotting away. The current order is needlessly rigid, almost entirely. Uh, being hegemonized by abandoned Japanese officers, to distance ourselves away from the poorly managed order, of course. We shall begin the establishment of several separate doc departments and agencies within the police force to hopefully diversify and decentralize their future efforts. Uh, a clear option will be the establishment of an expansive and flexible intelligence network, further increasing our own influence Guangdong, including a more specialized and tangible outlet for exercise and control. The danger of overly relying on Japanese assistance is that we only they only, we only see what they want us to see and not what is most useful to Matsushita. So, increases police increases police by a whole bunch anyway. So. Nice. We're so dominant. We've got a lot of support. The first of the new recruits. The smoke listlessly drifted around the uh, uh, around Officer Lambs who climbed in the toughened leather embrace of his lounge chair. Finally, back in the zone, safety of his own home, he decided to take advantage of an ever elusive opportunity to rest his weary body. Lamb had long hoped for a time when he would be able to rest long enough to permanently soothe the aches and pains that constantly reeled his body. And t after today, he was sure that day was such as intangible as ever. His task would have been to oversee the taking in of the newest batch of recruits in the Guangdong Police Force. It was an undertaking he was more than happy to see through, and although he doubted that the chief executive cared much at all, for the well-being of his officers on the ground, Lam was so appreciative for the provision of additional manpower, limited as it was. The new standards. Oh. Uh, the six years of school, and with basic literacy and maths, alongside language expertise, were too high for many potential recruits. Despairingly few of those who Lam that had met that day even came close to fulfilling them. This emergency quota would not change much. Officer Lamb recognized his former self in the fresh faces of those young men. He foresaw the same painful years of training on the job. The wounds of pain, the regret, like punching out hot ash with bare fists, yet the skin to toughen over time. If this experience could be taught from the start, then the pressure on the police would be released, perhaps permanently. Um, however, these reinforcements would not arrive for some time yet. In the meantime, the soreness Lamb felt would persist and his burden would not be shifted. Still, no end in sight. We have a lot of dominance here. Nice. Not bad. 16 away from them, and then... 13, that's not bad either. And what's, what do we need? How much do we need? 40? Oh, we we got there. It's close, but we got there, definitely. 1.25, 2.22, not good. 1.59 is not bad, though. Yeah, keep, we're, we're being very corrupt right now, but whatever. We kind of have to be. 2.26, nice, nice, nice. Just three more is needed. Only two more is needed now. Now corruption is pretty high, which is not good. So how much is it going up every month? Point one. Go do that too. Michael Harrington. Oh, I was not expecting that. Yeah. The price of action. Nakatomi Michio stood outside the chief executive's office, attempting to maintain a calm expression, of course. Um, his navy blue uniform, damp and drenched in sweat. It was known that the chief executive was conducting a campaign of intolerance against the forces of corruption, the last string of men that went into his office did not exit with their position or status. Nakatomi. 
Stared blankly at the mahogany door in front of him. Uh, with Behind it was a room where the fate of his career would be decided. He desperately tried to reassure himself, repeating comforting scenarios as placebos to soothe his festering anxiety. Perhaps it was just a routine affair or an unremarkable reprimand for not following protocol. He turned the steel knob, uh, doorknob gently after taking one last deep breath. Masashita's menacing glance and upright posture sent a frigid gust of wind in Nakatomi's direction. He sat down upon the leather chair, placed opposite the chief executive, shifting slightly with apprehension as Masashita began to speak. I suppose you're already aware of why I've called you here. The chief executive spoke in a polite yet stern tone, smoothly sliding into collection of documents and photos across the polished desk. Nakatomi shuddered. He wished to speak, but his mouth failed him. His deep breaths had transformed into audible gasps for air. His heart began to race as he read the words imprinted onto the documents, the paragraphs seemingly unintelligible aside from the mentions of his name next to the terms like corruption. He felt the walls of an expansive office closing around him as he inspected the photographs. His eyeballs unable to focus upon a single image, depicting checks and transaction records all addressed to his name, he looked up once more at the chief executive. His expression unaltered as a deluge of sweat poured down Nakatomi's neck. His fate was now clenched within Matsushita's hands, and earlier, time was all that's necessary. Drastic measures have to be taken. 5%. Oh, we need that right now. That's fine. Good. 89%. Nice. And, uh... 77% is not bad, too. Not bad. And we actually might get two more seats if we actually get the economic check done, too. So, right now we're at 8.5. So, plus still good. Oh, hello. 29.9. Not bad. Ooh... We need two more seats. When we let the economic check happen, we won't need any more corruption. Oh, there we go. Hey, increase our seats by three. More Japanese expats, more Zuzian support. Japanese approval. We need to get to 45.6 billion. My god. Oh, we actually lost two seats. What? Bruh. We need three more seats now. God dang it. Are you kidding me? Maybe you want to read about this, but let's go ahead too. Updating our surveillance. The streets and neighbors of Guangdong are brimming with hostile descent, and vexing with past looking in the present and every lustreless crevice. We must be made aware of any presence of resistance or administration as to be able to exterminate a threat, it must be first known by us. Location of the special branch shall be a uh, remedy to cure the lingering malaise of ignorance for a force that will shine out lights upon the darkest of shadows. A looming pair of eyes surveil the inundated maelstrom of fluorescent lights that are the Three Pearls. Special branch forces exacerbate our grip upon the security apparatus of Guangdong, allowing us to prevent any form of insurrection from occurring. We're maxed out on them seats over there. Hey, look, advancements. Nice. Does anyone know where the play button is on this thing? Nice. Favor the special branch. With the creation of the special branch, we have a secure presence on the chaotic surface of Guangdong cities. The special branch will be utilized with efficiency and ferocity, an efficient tool that ensures we hold sway over the streets. Uh, now they're able to retain the three pearls under our cautious and precise watch. They shall watch surely great, uh, uh, surely greatly improve and become a stark contrast to the current state. A beacon of safety and security that radiates waves of prosperity. We shall begin to eliminate petty crime and storm underground and strongholds. No matter, no person shall hide away from the ever watchful eyes of Matsushita. This sucks. Just need two more, though. How many more days left? 77. We should be good by then. Where are we at? 88? 85? We're, we're capped. Wow. And that's not bad. We're, we got with Zuzian support right now. Challengers. Oh, crap. We're going to buy this place. Are you flipping me right now. Oh, actually, that's not bad. That actually worked out. Chung Kong, yeah. There you go. Well, that actually helped us out a little bit. So, with this one, with honest pay, we get a uh, trinket minimum wage. And a uh, poverty begin to improve every own state, we get more Zuzian support. That's not bad. Alright, well, you know, we're doing things that we're trying to make that would make us, that would help us out. Now we got to limit corruption, get ready for the product cycle. Oof. Happy April, though. Happy April. Not bad. Underworld Ascendant. Oh, crap. That's not fun. Ooh. And Second Columbia. Oh. There's a Second Columbian Civil War? Holy crap. Oh, great. Just more corruption. That's what we wanted, right? Here. United Democratic Front. 
This is totally different. Salvation is costs. National Salvation Corps. Free State of Columbia. And then National Socialist League. Is this Hybert Heriberto Schwartal? This has got to be a meme. Back to basics. He's a letter of the Zolbrand. Was this supposed to be real? What the heck? Critical Industries. The, came, the call came as no surprise to Matsushita, who had spent much of the past week planning for precisely this scenario. Whatever the topic of labor standards was brought up, Fujitsu and Hitachi were always very keen to make their voices heard on the matter. And so Matsushita set up the meeting, and a few days later he was sitting with Ibuka Masaharu, or Masaru and Komai Kenichiro in his office. The two often like to play a little game of cop, good cop, bad cop in these situations, with Ibuka playing the pragmatic rationalist and Komai the amoral, or amoral robber baron. Today would be no different if Komai's player or new book is a stack of papers or anything to go by. We're concerned about the government's new preoccupation with labor standards, Ibuka began. Frankly, we're unsure of where this legislation will end. Giving government intervention in the labor market to a minimum is, quite apart from from being both economically and socially desirable, also necessary for the profitability of several critical industries under our ages. While we understand the importance <clears throat> of the governments of getting this legislation passed, we must ask for an exemption for the good of our businesses and for the country as a whole. Masashita's day had been long and he had no intention of indulging this particular dance. The decision had been made already days before him. Seeing Kamai speak to about, he leaned across the table and said, I'm sorry, but the government is not considering granting any exemptions to the legislation, or would be, we would be comfortable with granting Fujitsu and Hitachi exemptions. Now we good. But right now, as like this month does, Betty, we'll get it. We'll get there. Uh, as you can tell, I just reloaded the game save. I don't always record the, uh, my episodes in a single day. Usually, not always. So we're doing a limited uh, standard pass, passing my bobber. Uh, got a few comments to go through as well, so. Did you read this one? I don't know. A few short years ago, Chief Executive Suzuki Taichi implemented and successfully passed the magnum opus of his standardship, the Revised Labor Standards Ordinance, an ambitious piece of the legislation that would bring sweeping changes to the working workplace environments and standards of the manufacturing plants of Guangdong. <clears throat> As we can see now, the RLSO was incredibly over lenient and far too extensive for what it's trying to accomplish, which rightfully led to the man's downfall. We should not make such a naive mistake again. Our reform bill will be limited in its change, but still contained enough to be called such, and it needs to be at least demonstrated and shown in front of the Legislative Council for the sake of her image and longevity. Um, if you want to read about uh, 1952, Part 4, please go right ahead. Epidemic. I do want to get better uh, poverty rate. Which, dying workers, by their own hand, no less, is a catastrophe for the bottom line and for optics. To the extent which it does not under, duly burden our companies, or request us to be corrected, manipulate the government, or ease attentions. Ooh, that's not bad. But I want this one. Every year since the birth of Guangdong, hundreds of dissatisfied salarymen and wage laborers would opt to terminate their own lives, leaping off skyscrapers or hanging themselves on chandeliers. Some may have come to dismiss such a sight as a negligible normalcy. This is unquestionably a dangerous misconception. It's imperative that our administration truthfully recognize a so-called suicide epidemic as a persistent blight upon our society, having all intensified in its contamin contamination and erosion of our financial and industrial institutions while we grew preoccupied with other matters. Don't get construction of suicide nets around high-risk areas when it suffices no longer. More drastic measures with regard to worker suicides have already been slated for approval, and Chief Executive Matsushita shall lead in the ex excision of this cancer tumor once and for all. Pocket change. Chen opened the door to the, at the dead of night. Nothing moved. Uh, all was still and sleeping. Now wishing to wake anyone by turning uh, on the lights, he pulled down his things and made his way towards the bed by the soft light of the moon. He took off his shirt, then started taking off his jeans. The soft clink hit the floor next to him, causing a mad scramble until his fingers slid through the dust until they reached warm metal. A pang of relief washing over him, he picked up the coin and picked up and held it towards the moonlight. <coughs> On one side, a familiar symbol is engraved, clar clarity waxing and waning to the moon's position. Two circles with characters written in them, one for Koshi, one for Hong Kong, one for Macau. None of them are for the dead village back home. The word the word state of Guangdong etches up around the bottom. The two recursive symbols laid on top of each other. On the other side of the coin was a number. Not a very large one, but he had a lot more than them bundled together than he used to. Enough had to get some, something nice, soon, perhaps. He tried for a second to think of what he could get, and then he'd have time to use it. Then a wave of fatigue crashed over Chun. He lay half... Uh, he half lay, half collapsed into bed on his last conscious thought of the night before the scant amount of hours he had left before he had to do it all again. Work till you drop. Nice. Overall, not bad. So increases Japanese ja approval by 5%. Um, we're at 91, so that's good. Get more Chinese approval. Doesn't lower corruption at all, does it? Which kind of sucks for us right now, but because it's at 32%, which sucks, but we do what we must here. And we have about, 20, about less than a month for uh, the next thing here. Product cycle. Ease attentions or be happy. Huh. Huh. We do that one too. 
and increases corruption. As for the principles of pathology, physi physical, uh, physiology, physi physiological, oh my goodness, immune, uh, immune deficiencies weaken the bodies against even the most trivial of ailments, and Guangdong's mental immunity appears to have long been compromised by the unrestricted circulation of narcotics and depressants both within and between various social strata, rendering our systems excessively vulnerable to psychological disturbances and resulting suicidal tendencies. Our vaccine for Guangdong's disease, therefore, shall be the total isolation of its populace from such harmful substances, realized via direct supervision and regulation of the pharmaceutical manufacturers and retailers. Such measures will effectively eradicate the crippling negativity infecting the workforce, and finally steer Guangdong one degree closer towards diligence and prosperity. Nice. Six days. And we'll get household electronics progress as well. And we have a cup of coffee to keep us warm, too. Very, very nice. Oh, we don't have enough political power for what we really want to do here, but that's alright for now. And we want Matsushita the most. Well, this is, is it actually 20% for both? Nice. Very good. Alright, so we definitely choose that one. Uh, definitely choose this one. What do we have here? So we have the TH30 PU transistorized color TV. Ooh, nice. First transistor color television. So right now, that's not bad. 89% is pretty good. We can actually burn a little bit of our Zhujin support if we really wanted to, as well as our Chinese support. Wow. With Chinese and Zhujin support. Go figure. Because I know there's one down here. It's 10% Zhujin and Chinese support. We could. It costs a little bit of command power. You know what? We'll choose that one for now. 7.5, 10%. It's usually this one that's more difficult to get to. 10%. I'm not going to do corruption. 12.5%. Because right now, Chinese opinion will begin to improve, we'll be happy. It does increase Chinese support, which is not good. 46 seats, huh? Use underworld context? Definitely not. Hey, investments in the household electronics technology. But some comments include, not much to say for this last episode, uh, but except open up the bureaucracy and fuse with the state. Yeah, we'll try to do that. Hey, the state's finally gone. Picking the bones clean, the nets were in theory saving lives, but not nearly enough for Leong to be out of a job. You can never quite figure out how to feel about that, but uncertain feelings in this line of work were even more common than the corpses. When he received his monthly pay, he felt a kind of gratitude, perhaps the same way a vulture felt grateful towards Carrion. A tinge of sadness, sure, but they all seen that suicide victims before, left to be almost bored. The tragic ends of fathers, wives, sons, friends, all now nuts and bolts on assembly line. Standard parts stretched across a uh, long eight standard shift. Leung would never know most of their names, and on the occasions he read it, or was taught it, <coughs> It became a matter of minor curiosity, much like an abnormal facial feature or an unusual impact wound, another measure of passing and recording time before home time. The paper emotion, or proper emotion, to feel when one saw pavement covered in a viscera or a dormitory bathroom covered in blood from slit wrists was presumably horror or disgust or even surprise. It was not likely irritation. Hangings or fa falls were the next snap clearly, cleanly, required a relatively simple, quick process, but when blood or brains became involved, there was disinfecting to do, cleaning, salvaging the broken parts off people to be cremated all which stretched out uh, removal times. If it happened at the end of the day, it meant a late shift. A longer average removal times meant angry supervisors and additional stress. He felt his mind twisting into something resembling both thoughtless machine and thoughtless animal. Yet he was not their killer and a man had to work. Lung did his best where he could, though he was no undertaker, to do his job well and to treat the departed with a dignity they never received in life. Even as his own feelings grew numb, few would care. He would still be paid the same, the families would still be devastated, and the colossal factory complexes would find new stock to replace the old. But a scavenger such as Leong had to show at least some gratitude for the dead who fed him, if only for the sanctity of his soul, day in, day out. Uh, East tensions. <clears throat> Long standing tensions within the Japanese, Zhujin, and Chinese have expectantly escalated over time, with self proclaimed downtrodden demanding increased rights to educational resources and political re representation. Whatever dramatically exacerbated by our policies, such matters nonetheless require immediate attention, lest ethnic conflicts arise and critically disrupt Guangdong's day to day operations. Naturally, any issue involving our fundamental societal structure warrants closer de close to deliberation. We can choose to maintain a current course, or we can attempt to placate the marginalized ethnic groups with the minimal uh, reforms. Neither is expected to incur drastic consequences in the short term, but we must display commitment to our common citizenry all the same. Nice. Uh, which one do we want? I don't know. Because right now, we're pretty close with this. That's pretty decent overall. Uh, ooh. We're going to do that one anyways. <coughs> Excuse me. So right now we're at what? 85% still with the Chinese. The Chinese. 
and Zhu Jin. They just freaking love us. My god. Alright, well, they love us. We both those in. So we're going to be trying to max out the profitability for this one. Um, so, uh, maybe Turkish? Mexico? Let's do Mexico. We want lots of money. That'd be nice. Ah. It has exploded. Oh, Liberia. Never change. Yeah, I don't want to loan engineers from Japan right now, though. That wouldn't be ideal. So right now, where are we at? Hey! 140% profitability, 50%, 45%, that's not bad. And there goes Morocco, too. God, I love caffeine too much. Oh, uh, do we get another one here? Ah, good, Iberian Wars, yay! Everyone loves the Iberian Wars, well, except the Iberians, probably. Operation Tenza, Tenda. Oh. If you went about 1952, part 5, please go right ahead, giving up. <coughs> Excuse me. Very good. How's corruption looking? Oh, we still have 10 more days left, huh? 7.5% to go down. And it's only going up by 0 0.05 every month, which is pretty good, actually, too. And I do want to crack down on underworld connections, but once the product cycle is done, then we'll do that. But we still have about two months left, which is pretty good. And, uh, over here, yet? no. Be happy. Don't worry, but uh, ease attentions first, because you get even more police control, which is good, and more political power. Anything else here? No? Oh, that's weird. Thir 21. Um, good minute for the government. Keep them in their place. But at a time of our choosing, and for the sake of good governance and profit, that time is not now. Increases RCs by 1. Decreases Zhujin and Chinese support. Increases Ch Japan support. Restricted his hope service. Open up the bureaucracy. And if we open the lower levels of bureaucracy to the Chinese, as they, they won't be as eager to burn it to the ground. We get more admin efficiency, which I do like. Don't worry, as per the principles of pathology, uh, it's not a root of a particular disease, not its superficial symptoms. That requires precise identification and elimination. And the crux of Guangdong's cancer appears as a black, blatant lack of household safety provisions. With substantially greater numbers of opium balconies and open courtyards than acceptable, practically encouraging demotivated workers to engage in suicidal behaviors. And deliver the remedy we will. We'll channel the planning and construction expertise of our corporations commence comprehensive urban renovation projects, which will entail total elimination of building openings, as well as expansion of suicide net systems. If only those supposedly depressed or uh, rejects from our society would understand that we are doing uh, this for their own good and that of the Guangdong as a whole. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where are we at now? Oh, wow, that's actually really good. 55% product quality. Not great. Um, once again, come up here. The Chinese love us. The Zhujin love us. The expats, not as much, so we're not going to lower the expat support, so. Quality, 7.5, 10%. There you go. <coughs> and then that one pops up, of course. Um, yeah, I don't mind burning a little bit of goodwill if we help them out later, too. 12.5, huh? So we'll probably do this one, and, uh, almost, it's almost 12.5, not quite, though. Now, uh, where are we at for this one now? 72 and a half, so we definitely want this one. So we need 12 and a half, or 7 and a half, and 5. 12 and a half. That's 5% more corruption, though, and I don't want more corruption. Uh, so right now, we're at what? Yeah. 12 and a half, plus 72 and a half is 85. We do 10 and 5. Or just go straight 15. Decreases by 0.5. That's not really worth it, though. I need a tenner. Tiny bit more corruption? I don't want any more Kenpai Tai support. How many days left do we have? 45? That's not bad, still. Um, 12 and a half. None of these are seven and a half, except this one. I don't want any more corruption, though. I mean, we'll be, definitely be able to lower corruption later, so. 
You know what? We're gonna do this one and the other one. I said we wanna do corruption corrupt stuff, but I guess we are. So with this one, we're at seven and a half. And then five. So we're done with product interest. So now the question is what we're gonna do up here. Hey, investments in data storage. Very nice. Someone says, uh, the Don't Worry, Be Happy event seems to be a generic event for Guangdong, given that it also popped up on your Sony's campaign. Yeah. Hey, even more political power. Love it. You know, you know, even though we could use more stability, too. So, we're at 15%. So, how are we going to get to 15%? We're going to do that. It lowers our Japanese approval. Which, honestly, 96%? Screw it. We'll do this one, then. And they'll be done with the product cycle. you got to wait for a little more political power. There you go. About 3%. There you go. East tensions, product release. Maximum profitability, my friends. Maximum. Don't worry. Because that will definitely get us up to 100. 100 for both with 143% profitability. Holy crap, we're going to make some serious money. Ooh, Copenhagen. Copenhagen talks. Environmental standards. It appears that our struggle against one of Guangdong's worst maladies has enlightened us to the severity of another. The immense deterioration of overall environmental quality is evidenced by increases in toxic materials within Guangdong's air and water supply, a natural consequence of unsupervised industrial outpour. Chief Executive Morita, or <coughs> Matsushita, will con contact the worst offenders in this regard and initiate negotiations on emission regulation as a reiteration of our preference for a sustainable product production model capable of elevating environmental standards and therefore Guangdong's quality of life. Rather than degrade them to the point of irreparability. That's a good point to do. Nice. And we're doing the land auction. We didn't fight too many wars, but we fought in enough of them. Look at that. Get three more seats, too. That's nice. United Mexican States. Awesome. Beautiful, my friends. Curiosity is a key to creativity. Look at that. <coughs> While color TVs have recently overcome image quality barriers that had previously prevented their widespread adoption, with Sony recently taking, releasing a high a line of high-quality color TVs, these models remain prohibitively expensive, lying well outside the price range of many working families. This leaves an opening in the market for their downsized a down market alternative. Something that may sacrifice a little bit of size or picture quality, but that makes up for it in buying much cheaper than high-end models. With a new TH30PU, Matsushita plans to fill out that, just that niche. Using the same basic technology as Sony's models, but made cheaper, and with only a minor trade-off in quality, Matsushita enters the color TV market ready to compete. Only Snobs would notice the difference anyways. 100% interest and quality, 143% product profitability, 3 more seats, 3.5% real growth, 8.5% uh, GDP growth, 1.78 billion in miscellaneous income. I feel we've done very, very good right there. Incredibly good. Holy crap. So good. But we will have a little bit more corruption as we will be trying to get uh, some some more stuff passed. This will support the ordinance in this introduction. Extend this. Manipulate the government. As of now, there's no laws that separate a corporation and the state. This means the members of companies can be, may, can be public officials and still work for a corporation. Matsushita. Uh, technically can appoint members of the Matsushita Electric Company on his cabinet and other roles than in the government, granting the company enormous amounts of power, but not illegally to do so. Many in the Legislative Council will protest and fight this move on the, to the better end, considering how it gives one corporation a major advantage all over all the others. Sucks to suck. Room temperature. Javier sat in relief as the newly installed air conditioner finally began working, blanketing him in a blissful, soothing cold. Not every minor official was getting one, especially. Not those stationed in a minor city are surrounded by the Sonora Desert, but not every official had connections with the shipping industry. Most of got their cut, as people got their cut, and it got a brand new air conditioner. He didn't make this deals like this very clean, very often. Glancing outside, Javier felt the smallest amount of pity, noticing that not a single window that he could see held an air conditioner unit. All of the shipments Javier reflected were going to the men in suits, not to the ones in the streets. I was lucky to get one at all, he thought. Javier sat his, at the desk and cleared his mind. He did important work. It only made sense that he'd be rewarded in kind. If someone wanted cool air, he thought, they could come work for him. Hey, and hey, it was a lot easier to manage papers at 20 degrees Celsius. Works for me. That's a crap ton of corruption, though. Because we need more seats. We have how many seats in total, though? 47. Yeah. We'll do, we'll do this one next. And overcome the temptation. I, I want to do that one, but... Some of you guys really recommend we do this one. 15% more corruption. Holy crap. 
I have an efficiency beacon to rapidly worsen. Ooh. And so it gets really bad. Alright, so we're going to do this anyways. Because we definitely need to cut this down as well. Not bad. Alright, so we're going to manipulate the government. Which is always good. Why can't Masashita men sit in all the seats below him? That's a very good question. A price on clean air. Send him through, said Masashita over the intercom. An assistant appeared a few seconds later. I assume our friends over at Sony and Fujitsu have got some bright ideas on how the bill can go ahead without any trouble. Yes, sir, said the assistant. Holding two files. Uh, in his hands, I've already reviewed both documents thoroughly in the... Good man, said Matsushita. Let's get to it then. I'm guessing Marita wants half the money allocated to building a sanctuary for endangered Chinese puppies. Is that right? Nothing so sentimental, fortunately, said the secretary. Basically, he wants to leverage an additional tax on enterprises whose pollution levels exceed acceptable limits. They go on to talk about the benefits of additional government revenue. Which won't exist if these companies pull out of Guangdong, said Matsushita. This nation was built on low taxes, and it'll collapse without them. So it'll balance in all things, so what does Ibuka want? Fujitsu wants a more gradual implementation of the law with allowances made for the city phasing in of less polluting facilities to incentivize compliance. Then insist on a more patient... Patient, cut in Matsushita? That man of all people preaching patience? Apparently so, sir. Never thought I'd see the day. So he may have a point, he sighed. Whatever I choose, I'm playing into someone's hands, aren't I? Given the choice I choose. Well, for this, they only have two seats total we get, and we need four. And I don't want any more corruption. And we actually reduce Fujitsu's seats, so basically we get nothing. If we do Fujitsu, we grant provide grants for engineers and scientists to create new innovations that will reduce factory pollution levels. Well, so this one is implements an excessive pollution charge to discourage companies from polluting our waters and air. Neither. We're actually going to go with Fujitsu, which is kind of a radical change for me. So we only need one more here. Uh, we get more Zujin Chinese support, decrease Japanese expat support, decrease our growth by a little bit, increase our costs, which suck. But since we went with fault follow engineers, we get more monthly computational pace, research speed, which is okay, and more Japanese expat support, which we actually could use, so. We only need one more, which I'm actually okay with bribing our own seat, so that will now put us up to 50. Not bad, as we can now focus a little bit more on just cracking down on corruption. So overall, that is actually, that worked out really well for us. Environmental standards, and then, uh, views of the state. Oh my god, that's going to destroy our corruption levels. Urgh. Okay, the fate of our great nation depends on how well we can govern over it, and with our economy in desperate need of recovery, there remains only one option left, to merge with a Matsushita firm with a government at all available opportunities. In doing so, our scope of the administration will over the Pearl River Delta will expand significantly, as we integrate the private army of bureaucrats and secretaries to manage and regulate the country's resources. There is no doubt, once we usher in this new economic order, they will be making grim enemies with the opposition, however. As rival hatred turns ever bitter, our grasp over Guangdong will tighten, and prospects of recovery will shine over the horizon. Which is great! Are you prepared? It's important to savor the precious things in life. Morning walk, to taste a fresh scent of coffee, the satisfaction of a job well done. Few things are more precious than the air we breathe, the water we drink, Mother Earth itself. Now more than ever, we must do all our utmost to protect these things, lest we lose what matters mo what matters most to us. But this needn't be costly. Off at Fujitsu. Planning for the future is our number one priority, and the future of the planet is no exception. No business should have its vital work competed with fines or misunderstandings relating to the new ordinance, nor do they have to. Fujitsu offers a number of solutions to the changing climate, from consultations to a purchase and installation of machines suited for a clean of Guangdong 9. Out of the 10 environmental engineers recommend Fujitsu over the competition, and will even offer the first round of consultation free. Order a free catalog today to find out how you can make sure your business is ready to, uh, for the end of the phasing in period. Don't be left in the dark, and don't be left in the sludge. The future of Fujitsu promise. Cool. Nice. As we finish up the environmental standards, of course. As we're going to fuse with the state. You, me, and the state. What's, what could be better than that? Um, 85, 85. We're almost maxed out at everything here. It's beautiful, I know. Absolutely beautiful. I make it stable. Keep it safe. Although the government legislative council has full authority of Guangdong, they are forced throughout the Pearl River Delta with their dark motives and desires. Looking in the shadows, often in places one would at least expect, these unknown forces are likely to dam try and damage our authority over the nation. <clears throat> it's a tough challenge trying to tackle these risks, but they'll be much easier to face with a stable and local government under control. Underground crime and malevolent influences constantly are to find how we're to manage local governance. But with a determined cabinet and global bureaucracy, no challenge can be too great. Interests of Matsushita are the interests of the state. Nobody can tell us otherwise, and we'll do anything to make sure it stays that way. Taking time off. Matsushita Masahara contained a sigh as Atashi Wang, not Consul General Song, stepped through the door of the Consul General's office. Where is he? Good day to you too, Wang replied with a blunt detachment. The Consul General is indisposed at this time. I'll conduct this meeting in his head. No, 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 that won't do, the Chief Executive scowled. It's a matter of investment protocols. This is something which I must have the Consul General's input on. Not a lackey, not a stand in, not a subordinate him, and him alone. What's keeping him, anyways? A bad bout of sickness, I'm afraid. Another deadpan delivery of what was rapidly becoming a common routine. Is you here? Can I see him regardless? 
It's quite contagious, and what do you know of investment protocols? Hmm, I don't take you for a banker. I'm sure I can grasp the basics of the subject. Masashita Masaharo fumed, his grip on his chair the only thing keeping him from launching himself from, from it in fury. Some gears clicked together in his head as his furious gaze bore and attached his forehead. He set you up to do this, didn't he? To avoid me, to waste my time, to give him himself some time to think. Is he even sick? A man's health is not, nothing to ignore, chief executive. Shall we talk? What's well, good for Japan? Oh boy. Oh boy. Cigarette, Takashima offered one across the table, sunlight reflecting off his glasses. It was later in the day now, the sun at uh, a lower angle in the light orange and slanted to the reflect up, painting the wall and shade the color. If the man had taken a moment to admire it, they certainly found more beauty in the scene. As it was, though, their thoughts were focused on more material things. No, thank you. Now we can ascertain that Sony's transistors will pass through Nagasaki on the way to the international market. Taking our tier situation into account, Japan will take a good 10% share and the rest will be moving to the open market. I have an issue with that, Chief Executive. Takashima murmured sheepishly, retracting the cigarette and slipping it back into the pack he'd taken it from. The electronic firms on the home islands have taken issue with the tariff exception which Guangdong corporations are granted. Oh, please, Matsushita Masaharu exhaled. Each time I talk to you, Consul General, it's always become what the Zaibatsus are complaining about now. I can't cripple our experts to satisfy them. I know, I know. Now the bureaucrat put his hands up in resignated deference. It isn't fair to you, but they have the Tokyo's ear, Chief Executive. And Tokyo would like you to engage in voluntary export restraints. They'll pay you for it, and they'll certainly be appreciative of your corporation. cooperation. Matsushita Masaharu frowned, staring daggers at the Consul General. I thought I clicked together. That cigarette was your idea of an apology, wasn't it? I seem curious, Takashima mumbled, putting a hand on his forehead. But tell him to take the courtesy to, of adding an extra zero to the check they'll send. Ooh, that's not good. Piece of approval, though. Double bogey. A man had to have hobbies in the professional world. Everyone did. For some, it was drinking or smoking. For others, it was women. For still others, it would be concerts, operas, gambling, whatever else a pro rubber delta could offer men. In that regard, the opportunities were truly endless. Matsushita Masaharu led just to discover the constant general Takashima's hobby was golf and is beginning to seriously regret that. There's nothing I like more than to play a game at Augusta, but those Americans are so exclusive with their membership. To say nothing of the racial policy, of course, the old course in Scotland is a must-see, which I hope to get to one day, but Kobe is a beautiful uh, course in its own right. Though I must say it's exhausting to lug yourself up and down those hills. I would imagine so. Do you golf often, Chief Executive? You must. A businessman always loved golf. Have you? Uh, how have you found it? You seem like the sort of man who would love to have a strong putting game, I'm sure of that. So many of my friends have a struggling with putting or putting. Nothing more than frustrating than missing a short putt. And watching them get red and angry with themselves is, it's hilarious, truly hilarious. And even Arnold Palmer misses those every now and then. And Arnold Palmer, I heard he did quite well at the Scottish Open. Okay, one more favor to the Japanese consul should they become frustrated with us. My apologies, Consul Juno, but I have a meeting with the legislators today. Playing nice. Keep getting more favors for now. That's important. Getting favors, you never know if you get any favors. And we're at 46 seats, and they're probably going to cut us down anyways in the event. And then, too, so. Is that debt worth it? Honestly, no. That little thing we got there. We got 45.75 billion, which is honestly really freaking good. So, as we're fusing the save, and it's, oh my God, it's just going to skyrocket. At least admin cost goes down, but 15% more uh, uh, corruption. Oh. Oh, good lord. That, that just makes me feel so bad. But at least we're trying to reduce poverty, too. So, not bad. Please let me cut it down. Oh, no. Africa. Oh, no. Who could have seen that one? Yeah, we don't care about Africa. I have a December. 36%-ish. Probably more likely to be. Hey, Ashley Karashman is going down every month. That's actually really cool. Actually, with that in mind, uh, where are we at with this, then? We are very dominant across the entire thing here. That's very good. Uh, oh, do we have something else here? Product cycle. Uh, we'll check that real quick. No. I guess we do have the other option down there too, uh, the, the Pearl River stuff down here, but I never found any of this to be super important to do, and I don't want any more corruption, so we're doing alright. We have absolutely skyrocketed in terms of GDP above Venture Quo. We love it. Keep them in their place. Hmm. Open up the bureaucracy. Well, we may feel tempted to disregard recent reports, we cannot deny they have indeed brought to, certain, to light certain regrettable deficiencies within our administrative model. Deficiencies regarding ethnic inequalities which are susceptible to exploitation by dissidents, ever the threat to our domestic stability. We shall make a gesture of answering the cause of our citizens and begin gradually lifting restrictions from Chinese entry into existing institutions. Ground level and no higher, but only as a publicity maneuver. We can hope for, only hope our peacemen will satisfy the greed of the lowly for the time being. 1955. Um, if you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. I've read that one before, so. What about Mr. Hayashi? Columbia cannot take much more of this brutality. Is this a... This is a third war in this campaign. Democratic Republic of Colombia versus Jose Camancho Carreño. Heldonomics. 
God, what is going on with Colombia? I can't count. I'm kind of getting more interested. The more Colombia falls apart, the more interested I am actually in. Oh, they won. That was, that was so fast. The more they kill themselves, the more interested I get in, in, into them. So, what if I building? We've, we're definitely uh, way past that, which is nice. 2.21 is not bad, though. Even more police control all over the place. That'd be so nice. Hey, investments competition of uh, computer technology. Happy decade, or new decade, everybody. 1970. We've got there. This one don't make that sound anymore. Nice. We're super close to getting, uh, taking over, taking the Yakuza, but not the triads in over here. Well, we're still working on it. Nice. Very good, very good, very good. I like keeping people in their place. You know I do. Extend education. Recent disclosures alerted us to yet another noteworthy issue. Guangdong schools have been somewhat lacking in inclusivity, potentially resulting in the shrinkage and eventual exhaustion of our professor and student pools, regardless of our stance on previous related matters. An expansion and total renovation of Guangdong's educational institutions are, are in order. If we truly wish to nurture a new generation of innovators, who may assist in the expansion of our under-manufacturing capability and the maintenance of our unmatched technological prowess in the foreseeable future. So let's grow up, but we still have a billion in surplus. That's actually really nice. So nice. Did we do it? Not quite, and... We done it. We done it, we did it. Beautiful. I've never seen this place so freaking blue. I love it. This place, though, and this one needs to. We gotta get rid of the Yakuza. We got a lot of political power, too, which is actually really great. So. Approval. Well, we can't do that one yet again. Let's get away a little longer. But that's alright. Happy February, everybody, as we still are sipping on the same cup of coffee as we had earlier. God, I love caffeine. Hey, you want to about better industrial expert equipment? Please go right ahead. That's great. I usually, we usually see these a lot when we do uh, any Russian unifier, but as us, usually not so much. I'd be like, hey, went up a little higher, even though profitability for the next product cycle is not going to be as great. Oh, well, I'm ready. Promotion. My work is a productive worker. Tseng Min Hui nodded up his tie with nervous excitement, ready to finally start moving up, on, up in the world. His brain cycled at maximum speed through the ways of Japanese and vocabulary he tried to learn in the last few weeks. He didn't quite have it all down yet, but Tang figured he'd still be able to communicate with upper management reasonably well without an interpreter. It would come with time, he assured himself, and his knowledge and confidence grew, opportunities would become boundless. While his first day convinced him that he was competent enough to... Uh, a competent supervisor. It quickly began to abandon hope over any upward mobility. His Japanese bosses seemed intent to pepper him with all manner of inane questions about Chinese people, such as basic words in Cantonese, or whether this or that stereotype was true. His Japanese was com complimented auspiciously enough. It was repeatedly asked throughout the day how lucky he felt about receiving this position. He answered the same each time, becoming gradually less honest. His actual work received a little tension beyond nods and curt sentences. At the end of the day, Tsang realized he had essentially become a kind of ornament. One that was better paid and less overworked, certainly, but one which existed as an image of reform, which existed in place of anything more substantial. Or anything which would threaten Japanese dominance in the bureaucracy still. Life was more comfortable than it used to be, and saying would just have to find a, uh, find contentment in that. A few inches closer to the glass ceiling. Favor the special branch, which I think we read this last time. Yeah. With the creation of the special branch, we have secured our presence on the chaotic surface of Guangdong cities. The special branch will be utilized with efficiency and ferocity. An efficient tool that ensures Assures that we hold sway over the streets. Now that we're able to retain the three pearls under our cautious and precise watch, that shall surely greatly improve and become a stark contrast to the current state. A beacon of safety and security that radiates waves of prosperity. We'll begin to eliminate uh, a petty crimes from underground strongholds. No person shall hide away from the ever watchful eyes of Matsushita. Yes. Economic review. Look at that. We get three more seats, more Japanese expat support, and more Suzuki support. And Japanese seats, well, we might as well burn a little bit of goodwill then. More political power, we don't really need that. Monthly increase speeds, at this point, doesn't really mean too much. Uh, oh, we'll do it anyways, because we can. There you go. See what we can do? Oh, well, they're all, are they like prepared for like another Japanese invasion? Why are all, like, all their divisions on the coast? <laughs> 
Superior approval. Consul, do you not need to know why your government is delaying our exposition? The chief executive didn't bother with sitting down, putting his briefcase down beside him with a thud that startled Takashima out of his smoky haze. It's a critical matter for us. We need, can't afford to miss our deadlines. And the way the market works, I needed my answer, I need it now. My apologies, Chief Executive, but I, Takashima stammered, practically chewing on a cigarette, but a wave of Masashita Masaharu's hand cut him off. I don't need any apologies, Consul General. I need that exposition. And this is some meddling idiocy from Tokyo. Well, let me speak, would you? Now, Takashima was the one cutting Masashita Masaharu off, even if his voice seemed much less passionate and much more exhausted than his counterparts, yes. It's meddling from home. The Zaibatsu's UCR, they're worried about these expos. They think it's free marketing for your companies at this point. The Prime Minister agrees with them, too. What am I supposed to do about that? We hold these expos for advertising in the first place. I think it's rather simple, to, to be frank. Smoke billowed from Takashima's mouth as he spoke in monotone, fogging up his glasses and wrinkling Matsushita Masaharu's nose. Tokyo says it. Let them share the stage with your corporations. To be quite honest with you, Chief Executive, they're not wrong that you're sidelining them. Even if they're being petty about it, it's only fair to cut them in. As Tokyo wishes, how ridiculous. Let me find the world's smallest violin for them, and then we'll delay if we have to. Dang it. Talking to a brick wall. It, it wasn't always that Mas, Mas, uh, Matsushita, Masaharu, actually had a reason to talk to the attache rather than Consul General. Often his meetings with the other men were born of accident and disappointment. The product of the Consul General's busy schedule and the delight of which the Chief Executive swore his counterpart took in torpedoing his plans. When it came down to police and military matters, though, there was no alternative but to head to the rather barren office of Wang Jingyu. He really, really wished that wasn't the case. Reading these terms, Chief Executive, leads me to once again mention how lackluster the efforts the Guangdong police have been gathering in, in gathering intelligence. Your agents, our agents in the camp by attack, constantly outstrip their work. Your policemen get in the way far more often than they help. That's an unfair attack, Matsushita Masaharu responded, steepling his hands in an effort to keep them from clenching into fists. The police are doing their best to maintain order in some of the fastest growing cities in the continent, without adequate help from either the camp by tire or yourself. I'd have a mind to commend them even for maintaining an order in such a state. The attache scoffed. Explain that how my work consists, mostly consists of cleaning up after your officers. He remained unmoving in his seat, fixing Matsu Matsushita Masaharu with a cold, cold glare. China will continue to cooperate with your policemen regardless of the mistakes. Our time, meeting time is up. Up a mused stare and returned, exchanged nothing. Finally, the chief executive stood, allowing himself a shake of his head as he exited. How rude, and let me be clear. And that concludes our meeting time, chief executive. Unlike Consul General Song, Wang Jingzhu spared no pleasantries in his goodbyes. It was a blunt habit of his, born of being a military man first, a policeman second, a pain in the butt third, and a diplomat somewhere around 25th. Matsushita Masaharu grumbled to himself as he stood. Another waste of time that could have spent productively. productively. Maybe with the businessman or the assembly at the home watching TV. Anything but, of course, this. Uh, Actually, Chief Executive, I have one thing I'd like to say, Wang you stood up, suddenly marching across the room with, uh, uh, to block his path. I'd like to say a few words about my Ruan Guangdong. I believe I've gotten the gist of his attache. Masashira Masaharu murmured, attempting to sideline him. Side system, yes, I am the attache. My job involves itself with the army, the consul, and the police, especially the police. I am well familiar with their work. I am displeased by its incompetence. Well, now, I would like to make one thing very plain to you. Wang cut him off again, his voice both flat and sharp. I don't have much tolerance for incompetent policemen. They chose their careers as decisively as you and I have. In the end, we all choose to be here, making sure that your men can keep up. And then he was gone, the door slamming shut behind him, leaving Matsushita Masaharu amused, confused, and deeply unamused. And that man knows more than he should. I have a clue. But adequate funding. Context in the other world. Well, if you don't remember this, please go ahead. We're definitely going to provide adequate funding, though. The best way to deal with the Yakuza is to make use of our already available asset, the police. Guangdong's police force, while useful, is woefully unprepared for dealing with the Yakuza as such. Matsushita plans to allocate funds for the police so that they can be more readily prepared to deal with and suppress the Yakuza. However, while this is a tried and true method of dealing with crime, it has several issues. The Yakuza will be more secretive in their dealings and operations, and the bureaucracy is a nightmare, and the police force has no guarantee of, un of being uncorrupt. Got down. Good. I was getting better. 70 days left still, huh? Challengers. Oh, crap. If you worry about this, please go ahead. Yeah. God dang it. How many states do we have now? It's still 45. That's pretty good. Yeah. The enticing approach. Do we crush any triads, Yakuza, or both? Well, seeing as how much influence we have here. You know what? We could decrease Japanese expat support by a little bit. Okay. It didn't increase our police, but it did decrease Yakuza support, which is what we want. Not bad overall. Your surplus is definitely not as good as what it used to be, but whatever. We're just waiting for the product cycle at this point. Twelve billion, eh? Favor the special plan. Underworld is in it. God dang it, if you want to go this place, your head. Jesus Christ, come on. Bruh. Bruh. You stupid bad words. Nice. 
There you go. Give me it back, you piece of garbage. Stupid Yakuza think they own the place. In a testing approach. A new development within the situation with organized crime has revealed itself. Masashida and his administration have been contacted by two members of the prominent organization crime groups, Stanley Ho and Yokoi Haideke, about possible collaboration. Stanley Ho is the president of the SJM Holdings, a mostly Chinese-run casino hotel company based in Macau, and has several links to the triads here in Guangdong. Um, Yokoi Haideke is the owner of Shirokia Hotel and is deeply tied with the Yakuza. Both men represent factions within, within the Guangdong underworld that want to get rid of any criminal uh, rivals and contenders. <coughs> With access to men within the Yakuza and the valuable assets here in Guangdong and abroad, having one of the two men as an ally would benefit us greatly. However, dealing with them, men like Ho and Yokoi, is like making a deal with a demon. In the end, the price is paid with your soul, and the demon will usually cheat on you. Now, if you want to bet this, please go ahead. Truth bleeds into fiction, real bleeds into unreal. So, definitely read that one before. 2.2 0 home. 82%, not bad. I don't want any more corruption, but they're three away. Oh, wait, we lost this one again? Bruh. No. 1.25, 2.35, which is very bad. 1.25, 1.75. God, I hate the Yakuza. Not as much as I hate Hitachi. But I still hate the Yakuza. Healthcare, huh? Oh, happy May, everybody. Happy May. Hundred, huh? That's not bad. Uh, Guangdong Network, Kampai Tate State Control Cap, Republic of China Opinion Cap, Chinese Vision Government Support Cap. We're corrupt. Yeah. Silicon years. Cautious health. All makes sense. Oh, did another one pop up? So I thought. Yep. Finding an ally, we could do that, but nope. Changing the culture, passable. Begin the offensive. <coughs> Guangdong scandals and crooked underworld is a Pandora's box that is not to be opened under any circumstances. The participants in the underworld dealings and affairs of the vile criminal strongholds are below the surface are cal callous thugs who trade with dirty money and illicit contraband. Working directly with them is akin to engaging in the trivial conflict and, and is absolutely contradictory to the nature of our institutions. They show the gangs of the ever-shifting and repugnant underworld will be handled accordingly and unquestionably with their own police forces, manpower, and arms. Do we crush a trials, Yakuza, or both? Both. Nope, can't do that one. You gotta wait a lot longer. Why is points not bad? Spain is just not having a good time. They are just straight up not having a good time at all. Chasing shadows. Also, she had to wait until the sun had set. The officer hubbub peeping away to a dull, constant drone of air conditioning before cu cutting the seal on the nondescript manila folder he'd been keeping buried among his regular papers. Commissioner Tsuchida had slipped the floor across the desk as the rest of his cabinet filed out of the daily meeting, looking at Matsushita in the eye for the second longer than the plight before leaving. The breach of decorum had been intentional. Discussing the underworld openly was fine, but taking action demanded another level of discretion entirely. Matsushita flipped through the folder's contents briskly, already familiar with the content of the police reports of the Yakuza and the triads. These two were created in order to provide cover, padding in any case, any nosy secretary or spy decided to rifle through Matsushita's papers. Taking the final page in hand, Matsushita quickly scanned the room to assure him sure if he was alone, seeing only his own reflection in the nighttime window. At the chief executive's express behest, Commissioner Tsuchida had reviewed the police's capabilities and determined that yes, they could move against Yokoi, Hedekei's, Yakuza groups, or Stanley Ho's tried associates. Whatever manpower the police did not have, they could surely borrow from whichever group the chief executive chose to ally himself with. The enemy of Matsushita's enemy. Matsushita's eyes, his eyes stopped at the last paragraph. A brief discussion of the possibility of crippling both groups at considerable police expense, surely. It had been put in there to make sure the other two options look reasonable, and yet perhaps it was worth asking, asking if it could be done. Choke out dissent. Our newly branched and revitalized police forces are able to be put to use with the utmost productivity. They shall be deployed en masse across the state, spreading the influence and control of our administration from the disorderly den of the three pearls to the Aguirre hinterlands that once lay beyond our reach. The omnipresent threat of opposition remains and lingers in the cities and countryside, having been allowed to fester while we are incapable of effective action. This current order of matters must not remain. We are to Im immediately begin the process of extermination. Our forces attack acting as a coursing flame against the pernicious weeds of resistance. The systems must be sure of their safety, and the distance to their destruction. Screw it, I'm doing that one. 31%, huh? Let's 
for right now. 90%, 90%. Uh, we can burn a little bit. Of, oh, and we have the direct drive turntable. Profitability is not super high. Just whatever. Ten. You know what? Ten. We're gonna burn a little bit of our goodwill right now. We'll get because we'll get more of it later. Target markets. Uh, which one have we not done yet? We done Mexico. Profitability. China. Not a lot more profitability. It's a little more profitability. Tricky. It is. Gonna jump up to what? Hey, Mass Missile House of Electronics Technology, nice. <coughs> hey, that student's finally gone. 47, 35, not bad. Ankash, Earthquake, oh. And Peru. Well, that's not good. Peace conference is over. Oh. Goes down by 0.25 every month. Nice. Begin the offensive and of course choke out the scent. Which would be nice. 90%, 90%. Alright, why not? Because we're only 92% up here. Oh, Angle and Civil War. We can do this one again. Very good. Three, three, three. And then we'll see where we're at and reconvene with that. Terrible beginning. What the heck is going on? A person next to the Wong Kai Hai asks. She just wanted to go home. The two of them head behind a footstool, along with three other people shivering with fear. Uh, standing up for a moment, she sees a man lying on the asphalt, shirt soaked through his through with blood, a gore staining in the surroundings. The woman lowers herself. Sleep is the least of her problems at the moment. But a few thoughts nag her. What would Ka Yi think if she can sleep? A claim makes itself known at the same time as he realizes something taps a cart. A bolt ricocheting against metal, Ka Yi re realizes. There's deep yelling, insults, and slurred speech. Steeps, steeped in rage. Above all is the sheer noise of bullets. She hasn't heard this much noise ever since the New York celebration of her childhood. There's a lull as quiet footsteps traverse from left to right. It's here that Ka He makes her escape, though she's not sure the Truly sure that she will escape or not. What was intended to be an arrest on the path of the citizens powered a few hours ago. Uh, as Kai Hei turns up the radio, her left hand still clutching the walk. The criminals turn their weapons against the populace. She's unsure if she can truly believe that. 21 people are in critical condition, while 13 have been killed in the incident. Among them are three officers and seven gang members. Our condolences go out to the families of those affected. Kai Hei sighs. Take more than this to bury the underground. Decrease the police control in every state. Oh my god. Keep burning that goodwill. Corruption went down a little bit. Oh, we're out of political power too now. Whoops. Changing the culture. <coughs> the despicable deed of corruption has haunted this offices and halls of Gong, Gong's corporate and civil administration ever since its original conception. It has been thoroughly ingrained into the core apparatus of the state and slowly fused with its social culture. Through, though the cancer is still prevalent in the life of Guangdong, efforts to slowly and gradually and expunge it have been effective. Noticeable trends have formed with the, the decrease of accounts of open corruption, as well as harsher enforcement of existing anti corruption laws. All point to the conclusion. Uh, that the pervasiveness of corruption among the populace of Guangdong is diminishing. And though we are far from eliminating this menace, it's assured that we, to be aware that progress is, of course, being made. So where are we at now? 82, 82. Alright, so we can do this one. That would be good. Still not bad for now. Flexible automated techniques. Extraction. Sure. Why not? So we are at 82, and this one's going to do 5% more quality. There you go. And we'll do this one as well. There you go. 1957, huh? If you're about 1957, please go ahead. Through all the years past, so to all the years hence. We need seven and a half percent left. The specials. Uh, headquarters, Guangdong Police Force. Transfer, Bureau of Personal Management, th uh, through Superintendent Koshi Mobile Department to Senior Constable Hayashi Kozin. 
The Commissioner of the Police directs me to inform you of your impending transfer to the Special Investigative and Enforcement Branch of the Guangdong Police Force. You report to Guangdong Police Headquarters within 48 hours upon receiving notice. You are hereby relieved of all duties and responsibilities of your present assignment from Director of Personnel Training. Lamb cast one look at the paper in his hand before passing up on an, the staring faced officer, processing papers in the newly constructed segment of the GPF Headquarters, as expression in an austere mask. He glanced at the document for only a moment before handling, handing them back. He looked at Lamb. The specials, huh? The officer said. It took Lamb a moment to adjust to the accent of Japanese. The specials? Special investigator enforcement, the specials. Take a left down the hallway, the man gestured. You'll recognize them when you see them. Lamb gave a brief uh, nod before heading down the hall, only to be greeted by a serious looking officer. He looked over at Lamb with flaws Japanese. You're the new transfer, Hayashi, correct? Lamb swallowed, yes, senior constable. This is a uh, special investigative branch? The man nodded. We're a bit busy at the moment. Uh, orders from on high. Follow me up to the uh, station chief. He'll get you up to speed. He paused for a moment. Don't mess up anything, Zujin. Welcome to the specials. Lamb watched him leave and followed in his tracks, officers and men carrying supplies and checking for manifests. Lamb had seen this once before during the riots in the middle of the yesterday crash. He could hardly guess what it meant now. Under new management. So if we said seven and a half left. Do that twice, we'll be good. Honestly, let's bring it forward. Only 138% profitability, but in the concrete jungle. Um, every Even nightfall did a little to dim the activity on Koshi's shores. The night hustle and bustle of the workers, supervisors, and vehicles continued unabated beneath the dimly lit street lamps. Those with, though those within the building in question had far more sinister tenants, intentions. Lamps scanned the rooftops, or roof stops of the surrounding apartments, quietly noting his location and number of specials in camp on each roof. They had been on the assignment for weeks, and he could only identify the first steps of complacency. Boredom, it seemed, was a contagious within the, even, the, even within the best. Hi, Ashi, are you there? Asked with the voice over the radio, the unaccepted speech denoting its origin. Yes, officer, I'm here. Your orders? We're about to move in. Constable, I want your men to secure the area. Make sure that no one gets in or out without us knowing. Lamb grimaced. Aware of the impossibility of the task, sir, I cannot adequately secure the area without involving other units from the precinct. Without the support, we wouldn't have the manpower to clearly identify dissidents from regular citizens or properly court in the building. It was his third time making the explanation. Lamb just hoped the officer would have the sense to follow his advice for once. We discussed this, Constable. This unreliability of the local police has made it so far that their involvement cannot be permitted lest we sacrifice this operation's confidentiality. Lieutenant Tursa replied, Now, are you men in position or not? Sir, Lamb snapped, noiselessly suppressing an exasperated sigh. I urge you to reconsider. Purely relying on your men will ensure that this operation will be far messier than it has to be and risk all the effort we have invested thus far. Please allow me to contact the precinct and request additional support. The voice on the other end went silent, and Lamb went in anticipation of the officer's rebuke. You are paid to follow the orders of Constable not to question them. Now, what do you do as you're told? Make sure they arrive quickly, Constable. We don't have much time to lose. Relief. Uh, uh, we can do a relief for now. We'll see what happens. Hope we get that one back soon, too. Five days. It's only 25 political power overall. Uh, for only 2.5%. <coughs> relief. It could have been worse. Oh. Uh, it was a mantra alarm repeat as he walked up and down the perimeter. He drew on a short straw to clean up the mess left by, by the specials. Um, dealing with insults and complaints hurled by irate president, residents, chafing under the restrictions imposed by the debut of the GPF's newest force. He could at last, at least rest easy knowing his intervention had kept the specials from sweeping dozens more as collateral in their raid. Well, at least it ended today. Lamb gripped the microphone attention. All curfew and movement restrictions are in, the air, in the area are to be lifted immediately. You may now continue with your day. The Guangdong Police Force apologizes for any inconveniences. The incense faces and bitter looks, the insults and accusations, traitor, collaborator, and former, had long since lost their sting. One was not a Zhujin without having to deal with such ostracization only on a daily or a week, at least weekly basis. Not that it stopped him from trying to justify the actions of his compatriots. Such measures are necessary to ensure that the innocents were not grouped within the guilty. We wish no harm to those who were immediately caught up with the super subversives. The Guangdong police forces wish you a good day. Let him handle the microphone to the next poor officer who had to deal with the complaints. He'd never be loved by the public, but he could set up for being tolerated, especially if it meant him going to sleep with a clear conscience. An un enemy cowed for the time being. Should be able to get it right. All right? Come on. Pop it out. There we go. Not bad. You gotta change culture, though. God definitely, definitely change that culture. So, sleeping soundly. Although the neon signs still gleam with vivacious colors overhead, and the air is so tainted with the unmistakable odor of diesel fuel, an unprecedented change has befallen the streets of Guangdong. The concrete sidewalks appear to be orderly, the underground trading sessions are no longer present, and the derelict tenements overlooking the traffic, uh, once a stable of criminal activity, now lay silent and abandoned. An uncharacteristic yet 
desirable comments descended. The once bustling hub of illicit and criminal activity of Koshu extinguished by the crack of bullets and the stomping of boots. Many uniforms patrol the alleyways, their eyes scanning the place where criminals and thugs once stood, no longer harboring their presence. This Guangdong will be alien to the Guangdong of a few years back. This Guangdong has shed a portion of its identity, an identity that was inherited by Masashida, has now been cleaned by the same hand. While the issues may have been silenced, and we have yet to reach a stage of total pacification, the prospect of the re-emergence is up in time. Now that the police are safely under Masashida's thumb, we can turn our attention to other pressing matters, safe in the loyalty to the corporate state. Beautiful. Five percent, three and a half percent. Uh, try it stuff. Beautiful. <coughs> ah, the SB10 Technics drive a direct drive turntables. While audio recording technology is evolving, the primary way of physically storing music, especially older music, remains a vinyl record. So the market's out there for a record player that incorporates the latest technology to deliver high quality sound in a compact package. Masashita plans to deliver just that with the SB10. By spinning the receiving plate rather than relying on a belt, the SB10 can deliver consistent high quality sound. It also lost a curious new practice of deliberately stopping the record while it's playing. Producing and scratching that sound that bizarre as it may seem, some people seem to find appealing. Huh. Spinning records has never been so much fun. 100% uh, profitability? Nice. Look at all that. And we'll get, we talk about trucks next as well. Hopefully all before the crisis happens. The man of the hour. The nation's akin to a campus, painted and dyed by the ambitions and abilities of men, displaying the traces and remains, remains of the eminence of figures and organizations. The legacy legacies forever imprinted on the campus of Gong Guangdong. Uh, Masashida Masaharu overshadows all else. The Guangdong inherited by Matsushita was a state of immense opportunity, a land thoroughly mismanaged by its predecessors, riddled with in inessential excess and decadence, its colossal potential never harnessed. Through years of vast struggle, Matsushita has transformed Guangdong into the epitome of economic prosperity, a state that was diligent, adaptable, and above all, efficient. Through the abundance of adversity faced by the chief executive, the omnipresent light of growth persisted, and continues to do so, never dimming. Guangdong has advanced into a new era of opulence and success, yet the cogs of the machine do not cease. The zenith potential uh, has yet to be reached, and with Matsushita residing rightfully upon the seat of power, the canvas shall fall and to fulfill his desire. Can a nation be shaped in the image of a man and company? When we, when we behold Matsushita, we see that the answer is yes, it can. Precious, precious chill. At times felt like there was nothing in the world that could alleviate the overbearing Syrian heat. Mehmet felt the brunt of it most days. Going on patrol in the middle of the desert at high noon in full military uniform made a man feel as if he had left the living world and entered some grand cosmic oven. And yet, as he re-entered the military base, Mehmet was met with precious cold respite. A few weeks ago, the new air conditioner from Matsushita had been installed, and it made a world of difference to him and the other troops. The cold was limited to one room alone, granted which made it something of a haven for scorched troops after patrol. Throwing off his headgear and heavy vest, Mehmet collapsed onto one of the nearby benches, savoring the chill. He knew that historically, poor conditions had been the death of older Turkish soldiers. It would be, it would be back out in the heat tomorrow, but he had the advantage of the aircon that they never had. As long as he had a nice, cool base to come back to, Mehmet would be fine. Sweet relief. So where are we at with... Uh What's up here? It's maxed out. Screw it. We're so close to overtaking the Yakuza there. So close. 1.25. Independence for the... 2.35 is a lot. 1.75 though is not bad. We're very close to losing this one. Some of these places we're actually close to losing. That's not bad. This is actually good. This is very, very good. This is pretty good. And this one is also good as well. So... Just in case. There you go. The police are absolutely 100% dominant. We have all the police under us. That is insane for now. Um, as we get out of the police. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. 70% drops down to 9%. Corruption goes down by 0.55% every single month. This is beautiful. Daily political power gain has gone up. Monthly Chinese government support is going up. And real GDP growth is going up. 2.4 political power every single day. What's not to love? The man of the hour. As everything is probably going to collapse very soon. So we'll see very, very soon and see what happens after this. They send it air. Hey, investments in audio and visual technology. Does anyone know where the play button is on the thing? Which I've said earlier in this episode, but whatever. <sighs> Love it. Love it. Yeah, I must well do that. Product cycle. I must wait for that one too. A conversation of one. Lots of shoes stood in front of the rest of the packed assembly hall, and words left his mouth. Some were about prosperity, some were about stability, others were about continued success. An occasional polite joke met with polite laughter. The specifics mattered little at this point, beyond its function as a controlled and regulated pattern. He was in charge, and so words were said which reinforced his position. Uh oh. 
Equilibrium had at least been created. Those who doubted him or driven by their own lust for power had been dealt with or subordinated. Some may occasionally voice a token protest or some kind of veiled assertion of power. Um, over the chief executive position, Masashita let him. There's no real dialogue to fear here, just a sequence of canned phrases reinforcing already cemented hierarchies. He was perfectly happy to let them preserve their misplaced pride, to convince themselves that they had not been utterly outmaneuvered. Despite all their blueprints and schematics, the engineers had failed. Morita's misplaced compassion, Ibuka's grand designs, Komaa's brutish simplicity, all proven woefully inadequate. It was all, of course, for one simple reason, that these men were not administrators. Enough talent to keep their companies moving steadily along, perhaps, with a good deal of outside help. They could have never taken Guangdong's wheezing mass of contradictions and given it to I the vitality required to survive in an uncertain future. That had been an understanding of people, how to manage them, how to control them without realizing it. That, uh, that had taken the excellence of a businessman and a professional. That had taken him, Masashita Masaharu, a dude inheritor of his adopted father's kingdom, the man who left it an empire. Be polite, be efficient, and we're going to end it right there as we get ready for probably the oil crisis. So, If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see what else we can do with Guangdong before everything just starts falling apart. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.